a very uh, good morning to all so today's class is on diabetes mellitus and uh, these are the following assignments which are expected from you at the end of this session there will be two or three videos on diabetes three videos on diabetes and after the end of each video these are the assignments which you have to submit first define diabetes and clinical features classification and note on uh, ada criteria for diagnosis of diabetes acute and chronic complications of diabetes and glycated hemoglobin i'll be discussing diabetes under following uh, headings uh, what is definition of diabetes classification clinical presentation criteria for diagnosis OGTT complications acute uh, and chronic hba1c glycated hemoglobin and management of diabetes mellitus so diabetes mellitus is actually a greek word where dia means through and benin means to go mellitus means sweet so it is basically passing uh, the sweat through the urine it is defined as a group of uh, metabolic diseases characterized by hyperglycemia that results from defects in insulin secretion insulin action or both now if we have to talk about the uh, normal fasting plasma glucose or serum glucose level then okay then you can see here that we have got two guidelines one is who's guidelines which says 75 to 110 or 70 to 110 milligrams per deciliter and the ada guideline says 70 to 100 milligrams per deciliter and the major difference here i which i would like your attention upon is that who says up till 110 milligrams per deciliter as normal blood glucose level whereas ada prefers to maintain the high high highest uh, outer value uh, cutoff value to be 100 it believes that if we maintain within this range then a better glycemic status in a longer run is possible and most of the clinicians do prefer ADA guidelines and current ADA guidelines of every year the guideline gets uh, updated. So you can Google uh, ADA to 2020 guidelines and you will be able to get diabetic care PDF uh, in which you can go through all the aspects pertaining to diabetes mellitus. So let's now talk about the classification. Now as the classification says, uh, first Type 1 is due to beta cell destruction that is absolute insulin deficiency. Now earlier they used to call it as IDDM, insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. Now nowadays we don't use the word IDDM because uh, there are many type 2 diabetic patients who do uh, require insulin. So it is now obsolete to use insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. There were two main causes for it. There are two main causes for it. One is idiopathic and second is immune mediated. Like developing antibodies towards the GAD antibodies to insulin beta cells of islets uh, of Langerhans. So likewise, there are many other uh, causes which we have already discussed when we spoke about insulin topic. Now type 2 is due to progressive insulin secretory defect in the background of insulin resistance earlier again it was called as non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus but nowadays we just call it as type 2 diabetes mellitus now again in this we have two types obese and non-obese then we have gestational diabetes mellitus which is diagnosed in second or third trimester of pregnancy and diabetes due to other causes there are many other miscellaneous causes like neonatal diabetes modi that is maturity onset or diabetes of young exocrine diseases of pancreas like cystic fibrosis drug induced etc there are many more causes uh, but these are the major classifications according to ad now type one as i already mentioned it is when there is absolute 
beta cell destruction and lady giving rise to absolute deficiency which as i already mentioned could be because of auto antibodies to the cells like cad and uh, ant antibodies and uh, uh, even there are diagnostics which are available to diagnose presence of GAD antibodies. Age of onset is usually less than 30 years and these are the people who are more prone for the acute complication of diabetes or ketosis. Type 2 is insulin resistance and it is usually seen in patients more than 40 years of age and usually, most of the times the patients are usually obese. However, non-obese category is also quite possible. Let us discuss about the diagnostic criteria for diabetes mellitus. According to ADA's criteria, glycated hemoglobin, which is also called as HbA1c, if it is more than 6.5% and has, but with a disclaimer, it should be performed in a lab using NGSP certified method and standardized to DCCT assay, then these values definitely hold good. Fasting plasma glucose, uh, FPG, which we call it as, if it is more than 126 milligrams per deciliter and when do we call fasting when there is absolute calorie restriction for at least um, more than or equal to 8 hours or 2 hour plus uh, post uh, prandial glucose uh, post glucose uh, more than 200 milligrams per deciliter during an OGGD using 75 grams of mon mon monohydrate sorry anhydrous um, glucose which is dissolved in water in persons with symptoms of hyperglycemia or hyperglycemic crisis random plasma glucose of more than 200 milligrams per deciliter is also considered as diabetes so in absence of unequivocal hypoglycemia results should be confirmed using a repeat testing can repeat it at, at, at different uh, intervals of time and then come to a conclusion. Unless clinical diagnosis is clear, same test to be repeated using a new blood sample for confirmation. If it is substantiated with clinical diagnosis, then definitely go ahead with di diagnosis.